Hi, this is a quick video from Zimmer and Peacock about our um, accelerator platform for CGM, continuous glucose monitoring and wearable biosensors. So Zimmer and Peacock, we definitely have a philosophy that we want to go from um, people's idea or requirements to at least a proof of concept or a proof of principle, if you want to call it that, as quickly as possible. It's probably worth saying that Zimmer and Peacock is an ISO 13485 um, business and our, it specifically says on our um certification that we're contract developers and contract manufacturers of um, electrochemical biosensors and IVDs in vitro diagnostics. So let me jump into this a bit quicker now. So as Zimmer Pugot, we do have um, a whole series of pre-existing formulations. Um, so when it comes to wearables and biosensors, people are very interested in these days in lactate. So um, lactate in sweat for sports analysis, cortisol, um, sometimes in sweat for the analysis of stress, and that could play out for soldiers, firefighters, emergency workers, um, athletes as well. Um, people are interested in glucose, and when it comes to glucose, that's often measuring glucose subcutaneously, transdermally, ex vivo, however you want to call it, and more um, recently um, onto microneedles. So let me go forward a little bit and say, we, at ZP, our accelerator platform is to say, okay, what is it you're trying to measure? Um, and then we're going to try and get it into the form factor that you're interested in. And we already have the stack of technologies to get that data to the cloud. So let me describe our both philosophy and our ZP Accelerator platform. So the ZP Accelerator platform, first stage is what is it you're trying to measure? Is it glucose, lactate, ketones, cortisol, um, let's say, etc. The next question then is what's the form factor? Do you want to do a... Um, transdermal sensor, a minimally invasive sensor, or a sweat sensor. Um, and then after that, then, we um, I will talk about the electronics in more detail, but we have um, a pre-existing set of electronics. Um, on the electronics, we have the Bluetooth connectivity. The Bluetooth connectivity means um, we can then develop um, very quickly an Android app. What the Android app does, it tells the electronics what to do, and the electronics gives the data back to the app. Um, it's quite elegant because then we're doing this on smart devices. That's the app. I mean, we therefore have good connectivity up to the cloud and we have a really um, strong cloud technology um, called Julie. This has been over seven years in development and Julie is able to receive the raw, raw, raw data from electrochemical biosensors. So we're able to send um, current up to it, um, voltage up to it, depending on the sensor type. Um, the signal could could be variable but anyway we can send those kind of electrochemical signals up to the Julie um, and then in Julie then our AA capabilities allow us to essentially search out features in the data now this whole ZP accelerator both philosophy and practicality of it is this that we can um, very quickly develop this kind of technology when I say very quickly I would say typically to get to where the ZP accelerator is it takes people millions of dollars and about two years worth of work, um, but we can very quickly um, get people to a proof of concept, proof of principle. So we can start getting the data into the cloud. The next thing then is to make sense of that data. And this is a something that at ZP we've really pioneered, which is we can be bringing this, I want to call it ex vivo data, data from collected from, the, let's say, the surface of the skin. And by that, I don't mind if it's sweat. I don't mind if it's microneedles. I don't mind if it's... Um, transdermal wires but we want to make sense of that data and so what we can then do is work with a um, clinical instrument here I'm showing the epoch from epocal for example this comes with cartridges that allow you to look at glucose lactate um, etc potassium for example we can look at that um, that instrument and we, then we can do a correlation between the in vitro data which is really coming from let's say the patient's blood and the ex vivo data that's coming from something that we're um, collaborating with you on. And then that allows us to do a correlation between the two and very quickly then start making sense of the um, raw data that's coming off the ex vivo sensor. So we can look at the new data from the biosensor and we can look at the clinical value and we, and we can come up with a um, good correlation between the two. Um, just digging into electronics a little bit, I'm just going to do a very simple block diagram. The electronics in there we have, um, this is the actual board. You'll see more images of this board in a minute. This board is no more than 10 millimeters long. Um, 
and the board sits inside the electronics and allows us to drive um, an electrochemical biosensor. Um, so we have electrochemical biosensor, we'll have a PCB communicating with the electrochemical biosensor, we'll have a power supply in, inside there, and we'll have the Bluetooth um, connectivity. What you're about to see is um, very crude looking data coming off one of these, but this is a screenshot where we've, um, we're running a what's called chrono amperometry experiment and uh, we've made connectivity to the um the bluetooth device that's on the wearable and then we're sending data um back to the app and from the app then we can upload it to julie and then julie can sort of give us a graphical use of this now this is very useful to you because what it means is you could actually be wearing these sensors and even remotely wearing these sensors you know you don't have to be in the lab you didn't have to be in a clinical setting you could be out there in some ways living your life and actually contributing to the development of your own product because the data is being collected on you or on your volunteers and going up to the clouds um, and captured very neatly. It's, uh, I think this is the only system in the world where we, this can happen quite so um, effortlessly. Um, let's talk about the sensors themselves. I'm going to talk about the form factors. So the kind of form factors that we have. Um, fish tag is a technology that we have a website for so if you google fish tags in Peacock, you're going to find it this is off the front page um, and what we have is a cgm for continuously measuring the glucose and cortisol in fish now the reason i bring this up is because it's just as hard to de develop a cgm for fish as it is to develop a cgm for humans but it means that Zimmer Peacock has this entire technology stack for this veterinary application, but we can pull it across then and use it um, to help in um, human wellness and human health um, technology developments with our partners. Um, you can see with the fish tag, the entire package here is um, about 38 millimeters in diameter, and that's not really optimized down. It's, um, it could always be smaller, but I think it's small enough for the time being. And we also have the sensing here. The sensing element here is just fractions of, you know, it's th th this is tiny when you actually look at the whole sort of package, um, let's say. So this is something that we are able to pull across um, and it's had sort of several million dollars worth of investment, but we can pull that across into these health and wellness applications. Um, micro needles is very popular these days. People are very interested in, you know, minimally invasive. And if I was to look at... The big three, for example, in continuous glucose monitoring at the moment, um, Dexcom, ABBA and Medtronic, they all have a very sort of wire or filament type sensor. And I think there's a, there's a large, um, not large, but there's a startup community that's very interested in um, using micro needles because they argue that these are less um, painful. Now we have a lot of um, micro needle technology, and really the question just that which micro needle technology we would use would really be based on a couple of questions: um, how long do you want the needles in operation for, and really the kind of cost price that you're kind of going for. Um, and so yeah, we have a, a number of ways, number of micro needles, and a number of way of making micro needles. Lastly, um, because this video is titled um, CGM and wearable biosensors. We don't want to ignore um, sweat analysis. Um, so on the sweat analysis front, ZP has a massive range of electrochemical sensors. And we also have the microfluidics in order to allow these kind of sensors to be adhered to the skin and to sort of the microfluidics bring um, the perspiration, let's say, or the sweat into the sensor. It's probably worth saying that I think there's some good evidence that measuring lactate in sweat is um, clinically relevant. But um, if your idea is to measure glucose in sweat, then I think that's a clinical risk um, that you have to think quite deeply about um, before you actually embark upon that. Because you have to end up correlating the, if you're trying to do um, type 1 or type 2 diabetics and you're trying to measure their sweat, then you have to come up with that correlation between the sweat and the blood. And I don't think that's necessarily been done by anyone yet. So finally, in terms of contact us, if you're interested in leveraging our biosensor formulations, and then you've seen our whole um, ZP Accelerator platform, if you're interested in leveraging that into making a 
proof of concept or proof of principle um, where our buyer sensor, please don't hesitate to contact us. It's probably worth knowing that we have um, a series of what's called class seven clean rooms. So in there, we can manufacture as well, not just develop, but manufacture as well. And we can manufacture these in a sort of sterile environment, you know, in order because there's one thing is if you're going to put something into somebody's body, it does have to be um, sterile. So we can also be involved in the manufacture as well. So if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Zimmer and Peacock. Okay, thanks very much.